Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm making a prop from the new movie, Army of the Dead. Now, as I make this video, Army of the Dead is in its one week of theatrical run. Uh, it, it may run longer, but this upcoming Friday, for me, it's going to be out on Netflix and everyone's gonna be able to see it. Now, I did see the movie and I enjoyed it, and there's one prop that I wanna make that I went back and checked and is actually in the trailer. So if you've seen the trailer for the movie, you've already seen this prop, which makes this episode spoiler free. I'm gonna make a zombie headpiece from Army of the Dead. But before I get started, I wanna say thank you to this week's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Something that I really like about Raid Shadow Legends is the art. It's the weapons, it's the armor, it's the look of the over 500 champions that they have in the game. And the champions aren't just a bunch of individuals running around. They're grouped together into different factions and each faction has their own lore and their own history. So I thought this time we'll take a quick look at the first faction you'd run into in the game, the Banner Lords. The Banner Lords are basically medieval knights with a massive kingdom in the west. They're arrogant and warlike and believe themselves to be on the side of good. But a lot of the non-humans would disagree. You see, the lands of the Banner Lords were taken from them by force. Now, is there something more sinister at work here? Well, it's your job in the game to find out in chapter one of the campaign. So one of the things I really like about the game is that all of the action, all the animation, is actors in mocap suits, just like the movies you see. So the animation looks really good. And this month, Raid is releasing an insane amount of new content. First up, there's the 11 new champions, and I can't wait to see what they can do. They're also releasing almost 200 brand new missions to complete with an exclusive legendary champion as your reward if you manage to finish them all. And if that's not enough, they're also adding five tough new levels to every dungeon. That's an insane amount of material to release for just one month. As always, Raid's getting bigger and better every single month, and it's never been easier to get started. So what are you waiting for? Just use the links in the description of this video, and you'll not only be supporting my channel, but you'll get to summon some awesome champions just as soon as you get in game. We'll see you there. I'll start by making my pattern with aluminum foil and duct tape. The duct tape will keep the shape as I remove the foil. And the Sharpie lines are the seams that I plan to have on my project. Now I'm at the point of, 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 of separating the parts. I'm second guessing this seam. I think I might move it down here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna move it down there. It's just one of those weird things when you look at it and think, that should change. I checked that both parts easily go flat because if one of them just kind of crumpled or folded, then I would need to add another seam. This is, this is great. That's pushing it, but I think I can force the, the foam into what I want, so I want to keep this simple. I like to trace my patterns to cardboard. The cardboard keeps its shape and it just feels cleaner. Another thing I like to do is notch cut all of my registration lines. Those are the little cross lines in the seams. They help to make sure the parts line up when it's being assembled. And of course, cut out the eye and the thin slots for the straps to keep the mask on. I only need two pattern pieces for this mask. I just need to cut out two of each one. And I make sure to mark the registration notches as well. And for this build, I think I'll go back to my roots. I think I'll go back to some of the first foam that I had ever started using. Format foam. I actually kind of want it thick and the color is actually pretty good, so. It's cheap. Oh, format foam is cheap. I label the edges that glue together because it's pretty easy to lose your place, especially after the foam gets all heated and shaped. I cut out all the pieces while holding my blade at a 90 degree angle. The curve of the dome will just look better with the edges cut at a clean 90. But the eyes, I don't cut out cleanly. They're on a weird angle and cut with a sawing motion to make sure all the edges are jagged. There we go, all right. Something I've almost forgotten about, something that I used to have to do all the time before I started buying foam that didn't have a texture on one side. Format foam has a texture on one side, so I'm gonna sand this off because I don't really want that. 
my belt sander takes the texture right off. Now it may not sand perfectly flat. The foam moves around, but that's okay with me because it's less weathering than I need to do for the inside. Floor mat texture eliminated. Next, I heat the foam with my heat gun and I heat it up a lot. That lets me heat form the foam into a compound curve shape, which will be so much easier to glue together into something that fits my head. I also curve the eyes along the brow and a down the nose seam, but not on the side of the face because I want that part to hang straight down. I look at the shape that both halves of the face will make and there's not really enough of a nose bump right now. So I cut a wedge off the back of each nose seam so that it'll connect at an angle. And so when it's glued, I'll get a decent nose bump on the front of the mask. To glue everything together, I use contact cement. And because there's only four pieces, I can put glue on all of the parts at the same time. And of course, I only have four pieces and they all have glue drying. I just have to wait. It takes a few minutes, but when the glue no longer looks wet and feels tacky, I can stick the parts together, matching my registration marks as I go. The final seam always pulls everything back into shape. Sometimes my projects look too flat, but this last seam always gets me back to what I wanted. I put extra pressure on the nose seam because it's cut on that weird angle. Yep, that's pretty much all it is. <laughs> all right. It needs a lot more weathering than this. I cut some small strips of thin cardboard to reinforce the seam where I plan to add the straps. I just glued them in place with contact cement right behind the slots for the straps. I also cut out an odd shaped piece. This is my first piece for any kind of weathering. And even as I glued it down on the forehead, I thought, Maybe I should have used a thicker piece of cardboard. So a little bit of cardboard reinforcing, just a little bit, where I want the straps to go. There's, there's straps that go around the back of it, like a hockey mask to, to actually hold it on the head, right? So I want those to, to help that. And then this piece is because I'm gonna go with craft foam and cover this with a piece of craft foam, and I want this to help make an, uh, a, a, a bump on the craft foam, right? So it's not just perfect. I have a full sheet of two millimeter thick craft foam. Now, I don't think I can cover the full face all at once, but I can get most of it. I heat the craft foam to shape it, just like I did the mask pieces. But instead of the planishing stake, I use my head cast to really pull on the foam. And somehow I didn't get any part of that action on the camera. And I add as much of a curved shape into the sheet of foam as I can. Now I coat the mask with contact cement and paint most of the craft foam as well. And when ready, I pull and stretch the craft foam over the mask, covering all the seams. Now this is not a perfect cover, of course. There are wrinkles, which I flatten as much as I can. And the left side is short. The foam doesn't quite make it all the way around the face. So I cut some of the extra off of the end and then glue it to the left side. And then trim all the edges and roughly cut out the eyes again. It's fitting the way I want it to. Now for more weathering and damage. The main reason that I wrap the mask with a layer of two millimeter foam is not to just cover the seams, that's a bonus. It's so that I can cut these big gouges and have layer peels, which the mask has in the movie. I cut through the top layer of foam and use a heat gun to loosen the contact cement and peel off the top layer of foam. It doesn't come off perfectly clean, but really, that just helps. I cut a bunch of jagged layers on top of the mouth. The movie has this detail too, and it sort of looks like teeth. I work my way across the front of the mask. I like the ones that have an odd shape, and I like that they're not just a bunch of shark teeth. I continue distressing the edges, removing a lot from one of the corners, and working on the eyes, and changing all of the folds that's on the foam cover into cracks and long gouges and really distressing the left side where the two pieces of foam didn't meet. Alrighty, so I think I've got all the major damage that I want. I've got, I really like all the layers of, of, of chunks coming off. Uh, I think this could have been a little thicker, but that's okay. What I wanna do now 
is I want to come back with a Dremel and add some more smaller lines. I'm going to try this disc piece first, but chances are I'm going to do most of the work with uh, one of these cylinder drums. So I gave this bit a shot. Maybe it'll work. <laughs> yeah, nope. <laughs> I don't like the way this looks at all. So I switch it out for that other grinding bit. And by purposefully hitting the foam with the corner of the bit, I can get little triangle gouges wherever I want them. And I really work on the edges, the cut sides of the foam, because I don't want them looking like cut sides of foam. Now this is more of an artistic choice, because I don't clearly remember how the sides looked in the movie. But I really like this super rough, chewed up by rats appearance that I'm getting with a rotary tool. I work on the inside of the eyes as well, so the very back of the eye socket doesn't look like a corner. And then carefully carve deep scratches over the face. I have a one inch roll of backpack strapping, which I plan to use to hold the mask onto my head. And I clean the holes in the sides for the strap. Then I make sure the strap can fit through each of the holes. So I got all the spots that I want to put straps, which is going to be two over the ears and one over the top, just like a hockey mask. And uh, now I can paint it. Now to paint it, one of the reasons why I went ahead and did the mask in the uh, floor mat foam and in black um, uh, craft foam is because I didn't want to plastic dip it. What I wanted to do is try to keep this simple. So I'm using simpler, easier to find materials, and I'm just gonna paint it with uh, the Platifex paints. That may not be as simple, but yeah, acrylic paints will work. All I'm gonna do is basically, I think I'm gonna, gonna take a paper towel and smudge it with uh, a dark silver, and then I'll put some, uh, maybe a little rub and buff. And I decide to do just that. I pour a little bit of paint into a paper towel and then just rub the paint over the foam. It collects in the lower places, which is fine, but I also start to get a really dull metallic cover across the top. It's hard to say if I've put too much on. Alrighty. I guess it would just kind of become a solid color. And this process only took about six minutes. Then I started to add a lighter silver color as well. This is the same technique. It's even the same paper towel. In the movie, it appears to be just metal, which is why I don't think I needed to change the color from the foam. The last bit of paint I want to add is some rub and buff silver paint. And just a little bit of this stuff goes a really long way, so I need to be very careful of where I'm adding the color. Because I want it just on the edges, just to highlight them. I don't want to just paint the whole thing up again. Now I do think I put a little too much on, but you know, maybe that's just me. <laughs> okay, I really need to put the straps on it. And then I'm kind of done. I cut three pieces of one-inch strap and sew the end shut, securing it to the mask. For the two side straps, I add some hook and loop tape. You know, Velcro, I add that to the ends. Then the middle one has both of the same strap, so it can loop over the side straps and attach to itself. Now, it may take some adjustment to make it fit perfectly, but I should have enough give on the straps that it'll fit most people alive or undead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it works. Cool. That's a, uh, yeah. All right. That's all it is. All the materials I use in this video, I already had in the shop. I put a list in the description. So I really enjoyed Army of the Dead. I thought it was a fun mix up or mash up of the zombie genre with a bank heist movie. Um, it had a lot of really creative ideas and I think the uh, Zack Snyder's idea 
of setting it in Las Vegas, not only, you know, worked for the plot, but visually worked for the film because you've got all the different architecture, all the different types of buildings that are on the strip in Vegas. Now you get to see those in a destroyed form, as well as all the different characters, all the different types of people that, at least stereotypically, are walking around in Vegas. You Elvis impersonators, flamingo girls, people in Bermuda shorts, anyway, all that is in there, and it is a lot of fun to see. So seeing different types of headdresses and different things that the zombie had when they turned, eh, this is no surprise. This should be no, no big spoiler, but this was a really fun afternoon project that I, that I did using materials that I was easy to pick up locally. I've, I, I really like the foams I typically use, but a lot of those, for a lot of you, you'd have to mail order them. This, uh, the craft foam, I got at a craft store. The floor mat foam, I got at Harbor Freight Tools. Those should be convenient for most anybody in the continental US. And, um, you know, this is just backpack strapping, whatever. So this was a fun project to do in an afternoon. If you want to make one, I'll take the two little uh, pattern pieces that I made. I'll put those in a link in the description so you can download those very simply. So you can make one of your own, distress it however you like, because, you know, I know there's going to be lots of different ways you could make zombie headgear. But this? The Banner Lords are basically medieval knights with a mastiff, with a mastiff. They got a mastiff, they got a big dog. I wanna thank Starius, Creaturix, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.